All right. Hey guys, Danielle here, Mama Fit for Life. And I have Sarah Oski Morrison with me from Michigan. I am super excited to be chatting with her today because we have uh, been on this network marketing MLM journey for quite a few years now, since 2010, I started, you started in 2009, 2010, 2010. June, yeah, so right around, yeah, literally the same. And, um, What's great about Sarah is that she has really had such a huge transition over the years, how she came into the business and where she's taken her life and business and everything. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But our main focus today is really going to be on relationships, your um, relationship with your spouse, building that relationship, especially as a business owner. A lot of couples struggle in that department because of different things, but a lot of times when a woman takes that leadership role, it can have a little bit of a, a struggle in the relationship. So a few accomplishments. So Sarah is very strong and well-known in the social media world, almost 12,000 followers on Instagram, very interactive. Um, she has probably one of the highest customer retention rates, I feel, in our network marketing business. She's always at the top. She takes care of her people, which is amazing. Um, and it's something we all strive to do. She is a wife. Her husband is a firefighter. She has two beautiful kids. And um, she's a recovering pessimist. That's what she uh, goes by. And I got to meet Sarah at the beginning, well, at the end of her pessimist phase, right? And the beginning of her, I don't know, come out phase, like how you are now. Like, I love it. And uh, they love to camp and be outdoors, lots of adventure in their lifestyle. And what the network marketing world has really brought to Sarah and her family is that freedom and flexibility to live life to the fullest. Um, so she is debt free before the age of 40, which a lot of people strive to be. They just paid off their mortgage uh, very recently. And that was super exciting. And then in this past year. It was just, I think a year plus, uh, she created a run your day planner, which just speaks to her because if you know, Sarah, if you follow her, you know, she is a runner. She ran her first marathon this past year. And it was fun to watch her train for that. And all of the adventures they run in the snow, they have snow <laughs> when they run. Um, I'm in Virginia beach, so I do not have that dedication. But <laughs> When snow's around you for how many months out of the year, you got to make it happen. So Sarah, I'm so excited to have you on today and to be talking about your relationship with Chris and really how it's evolved over the years of you building your own business. Thanks for having me. Wow. You know me so well. So many stories. And I was just thinking about when I first met you, I was definitely gripey, if that's a, a word. Um, but Danielle's always... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've always just been smiling and upbeat and like, you don't make it feel like things are impossible or you're just like, well, why wouldn't we? So anyways, Danielle put up with me and gave me lots of, gave me a second chance. <laughs> well, it's funny because when we met, it was both of our first live event for the business. I was 20 something weeks pregnant with my first. You uh -huh. just found out you were pregnant. You were like eight weeks pregnant. And, I, and that's a rough phase, eight to 10 weeks, you're tired and here you're at an event. Um, but it was funny because one thing that you talked about in your prep survey that you pointed out, and I love that you're open about this because you talk a lot about, you didn't have plan to have kids, right? But you are a mom now. And you had that sit down conversation with Chris and said, you have to be the primary parent because I wasn't around kids all the time. I'm an only child. I didn't have a big family. I don't know what to do with kids. And I feel like your pessimism also was a realist. And with that realist side, your open communication with your spouse is huge. It's what a lot of people are missing. And by being real with yourself and real with your spouse, you guys were able to dive into that right away from the very start. And then your spouse knows where you're coming from if you have a struggle day, right? So, but Chris is a firefighter. So he has those 24 seven shifts and it's a little bit crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, um, sometimes I feel bad saying that I, I didn't plan to be a mom. I never thought about it. Yeah. You know, when you're not That's around not kids at all, because so many women go through that and they struggle with putting it out there because of exactly what you just said. But if you didn't plan to be a mom, then like when it comes up, right, it's a huge mental shift and huge one shift. that you have handled very, very well. 
I uh, love I, I love watching what you guys do and your kids and they eat healthy. And I think you guys have a lot down packed and obviously every marriage has its ups and downs and whatnot, but uh, you guys are fun. I like watching you. Uh, thanks Danielle. And I always say, I just tell people like, you know, everyone gets compliments on their kids, I'm sure. But when people compliment me, I just think like it worked out. Like I got the best kids because someone knew that I was not super kitty. Um, and I just got kids that get it like that mom's this way. She's not around this dad's like this, like they kind of get our roles. Um, and I of course love my kids to pieces, but I'm like, I feel like I got the right kids for me. Like, but that could also be just the expectations that have been set for them in the way that they live. But 100%. I love being a mom now, but I still pull that primary parent card. I'm like, Christopher, you promised to be the primary parent. <laughs> and yeah. he, never, he never questions me. I told my friend that one time because she said she had no time for herself. And I was like, well, what about your husband? And she just gave me this look like, I can't ask him. And I was like, oh, and I said, I made my husband promise to be the primary parent before I gave birth. And she gave me this look like that's a thing. No, it's not a thing. Like it just came out of me because I didn't know how else to like prepare for it. But you right. can take and it and make it a thing. <laughs> it was your reality because of who you were and your experience. I feel yeah. like a lot of moms who have not, I grew up taking care of kids. I was told at a very young age, you will be an amazing mom because like, I just, I was always around them. I had, I, I do well with them. I'm comfortable with them. Um, Adam was the similar to you. He does have one sibling, but he did not grow up around any kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? No so one told me I'd be a great mom ever, but it's funny you say that. I already tell my daughter that because the way she takes care of younger kids when she's around, I'm like, whoa, this is interesting. Right. And very it's caretaker. Really, yeah. You, you have yeah. these natural things that just come out of you. And that was one side relief as a mom. I was like, okay, I really can't screw them up too much. They already have, <laughs> like, they're already in there. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Which is awesome. Um, so let's dive into, so we talked a little bit about that becoming a parent and the openness, but let's talk about the business side. Um, when you started your business, kind of exposing your spouse to that, getting mm -hmm. involved because Chris is, is highly involved in your health and wellness world. And a lot of, um, a lot of women struggle to have their spouse be a part of it. Right. And I just love to know kind of how he was introduced to it. I know. So I'd love for you to share, um, but kind of how he got his feet wet and then got more involved over the years. Well, based on whatever assumptions you might've made up from my last story and share there about the primary parent, Chris, my husband is um, not the type to overpower me. I like to think that we have an equal relationship. So me signing up to do this business, he wasn't going to say no to, but it did matter to me um, to have his support. I didn't ask him to do it. I've just never asked anyone really to do anything. You know, I'm a bit of a loner only child. Um, but when I started talking to him about it, his attitude was very much, I think you're having the wool pulled over your eyes. We'll see. And so just think about what people's experiences are going into it. So I realized his ex-wife was an Avon rapper, had sold makeup. Uh -huh. And so he had products everywhere in the house. So I'm like, oh, this is his experience with it is that he saw her spend money and have products sit here. Mm -hmm. And so he was very skeptical at first, but never would get in my way, just maybe not as supportive as I wanted him to be. Um, and it's, I mean, so much of it was me just sharing what I was doing. And first it was getting him on board with his own health and fitness. He used to say, I don't want to go work out. I will run for tip ups. I will walk in the woods and I will climb hunting blinds. Like he was just like, that's how I work out. Like very mm -hmm. outdoors, none of that stuff. But then, um, I remember we were going to go on a, a cruise or something. So he started doing some workouts with me and then this, um, nutrition program came out and he decided to do it with me. He always calls himself my Guinea pig. And that's really yeah. how he got involved. And what happened was, I was pregnant, like we just talked about. So I couldn't do the nutrition program full blown, but he did. So he was my guinea pig and he lost 20 pounds and felt amazing, but he also completely changed his cholesterol levels. He had just discovered in his thirties, he already had like 
moderate risk for cholesterol. And I was like, you're like 30, this is crazy. And so he had just had that blood work done. And when he was done with the nutrition program, it dropped to low risk, but his triglycerides dropped over a hundred points. Wow. So it was just shocking. And he was sold. He was like, okay, this stuff works. Right. But it wasn't really, it wasn't until I would sit there and tell stories, like, listen to this woman that I just helped. This is what she just wrote to me. Can I read you this message? And like reminding him, because so many multi-level marketing businesses are built, could be built from your phone now, which is cool. Mm -hmm. But the downside to that is you look like you're just on your phone all the time playing games. Because like, you know, when my husband's on his phone, he is playing the game. <laughs> He's not building a business. They reflect. They reflect that. Oh, she must be right. too. <laughs> and I just had to remind him, like, I'm not playing the game. I don't have any games on my phone, honestly. <laughs> Um, like this is what I'm doing right now. I just would tell him, Hey, I'm setting up a nutrition group. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing for the next 30 minutes. So just really trying to help them see what it is. So they don't make the assumptions Yes, because it does take your attention. And the, the bonus and the perks of having a network marketing business like ours is you can do it anywhere. Right. But so sometimes I might be next to him on the couch, but I'm also working. And so it's just kind of that reminder and sharing some of this stuff, sharing my first paycheck. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is where I see this going. This is what this could do for our family. Like just even if he won't dream, I've done so many things where I was like, let's write down our dreams for the year. And it wasn't, it's not his favorite activity. Um, I think I wrote like pay off student loans and he wrote, get a recliner. <laughs> and I was just like, Okay. I was like, let's just buy your recliner. Could I buy your recliner with the income I've made from this business? Right. So I'm like, here's your lazy boy. Oh, I can't believe I have a lazy boy in my house, but he got it. Yeah. So just trying to help him see, like, I think this business could make these dreams happen. Right. It sounds like, so uh, for those that don't know, Sarah's former world, she was a journalist. So she visually puts out there in words things very very well and I, I think for a lot of people I'm very visual so it it does make a difference when you're sharing as much as possible with your spouse because now he's hearing it right he knows mm -hmm. what you're doing you're visually sharing that too and um, it's funny because I think Chris and Adam did the reset at the same time because Adam literally finished the day before I birthed Elevy. <laughs> oh geez so, okay like 14 pound loss looked phenomenal. And I mean, I did not look bad. I had a very good pregnancy, but it's like, you know, he's in this phenomenal shape and here I am just busting out a kid. And, right. uh, but yeah, it was the, the, when it first came out, the nutrition and that experience, that health win is huge. If they can participate in what you do, it really does make a difference. Even if they're hesitant, it's like, you got to get them in the door somewhere, somewhere. And uh, having them as a guinea pig is, is a great first. So that's awesome. But it really does sound like you're consistently verbalizing what you have going on. The paycheck is big. So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say to this day, like I've been doing this for 10 years and any message that floors me, Chris hears about it. Yeah. So, and, and I mean, you'll get those. They recognize the names of people. They recognize the things that you're doing, the accomplishments. I remember when I was pushing for two star and I'd go to Adam and say, oh, I'm so excited. And he's like, oh, you got two star. And I'm like, ah, stop saying that. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's something else. It's something else. But it was exciting that he knew that right. was on the, the list and the achievement board. So, yeah. And then, so I, I remember you sharing a big thing when you were talking about sitting on the couch with him with the phone. And I remember you sharing kind of a little revelation that you were watching three or four shows together at night. And there was a time that you said, Hey, it's a little distraction. I feel like I could get more done if I separate myself. What's one show? Like, what do you love watching together? And I do feel like this is huge because you want to spend that time with your spouse but you want it to be valued and given that attention. So instead of being on your phone for four episodes of whatever, now you're on his side watching with him for one episode and giving time to your business, those other three episodes. How did that come to mind or where did that, um, like, how did he take that? How did that conversation go? You know, Chris is very easy with whatever, like he kind of likes to be a little directed um, as long as it's something he's so easygoing that he generally likes most things. So it went great. He could just be like, okay, you know? Um, so a lot of times I'll just say like, 
I'm going to do 30 minutes of work really quick. I'd like to reply back to all of my clients. You know, like, can we meet up at nine o'clock and watch whatever show we might be watching? Mm -hmm. I definitely just watch way less TV now. So that's good. But like kind of just evolved over the years. Like the other night, Chris sat back there on my couch, you know, like he was on his phone, maybe just looking at headlines or reading his book sometimes while I do a team call. Which right. is so nice. Like, I love that they saw him back there, but also that he hears the stuff we're talking about. Cause he's kind of like, he's not running his own groups and things like that, but he knows what's going on and he gets it and he knows the people and he says, hi. So it's kind of fun just to have him in the room or even in my morning routine, I get up a lot earlier. We've kind of worked it out now. We're like his second day off. Cause he's gone every third day. He'll get up early too. And just come down here and read. So it's kind of nice. Like as I write a message to someone, I can be like, and then go right back to work. So it's kind of like just sometimes being in the same space, knowing that I have work, but I'm just not going to ignore you. But like, just be here. Yeah. And that's also him putting in that time and energy to be around you. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? When you guys have, you know, like you said, it's not like you're talking the whole time. He's just present and in the background there so that when you do want to say something, or if you are doing a meeting and they overhear, it really is a great way to involve them. Live events, anything that they can participate in, um, it just gives more of a reality and a purpose to the business. Because for a lot of people, the network marketing world, because so much of it is behind the scenes, it gets pushed to the side. Like it's not as important. So for a lot of people, they're bringing home a good paycheck, a full income beyond a full income. And for that to be pushed to the side, you know, you don't want to downplay that. So supporting each other through your individual passions. Um, so now it's fun because Chris teaches classes at the gym, you know, you guys are in a very small community and for a lot of people, they might think there's not a lot of opportunity, but what has happened in your small town in Michigan has really, um, really evolved the community to believing that so much more is possible, right? Mm -hmm. In a small town, so many people think they're not going to go anywhere and you guys have really built such a great community. So, um, did Chris decide to, to start teaching classes or like what kind of spurred him to dive into that side of things? Well, I would like to say that my choice to do a network marketing business and fitness led to him getting in great shape. The guy has lost about 30 pounds. I mean, obviously he did the work. I'm just heckling him a little bit, but um, it definitely rubbed off on him. And then we were, we, we were always open to like, who could be another trainer? Who could be another group X instructor? And Chris goes, to, he would go to my classes and do stuff at home and things like that. And his name came up and I was like, he might, and he was open to it. He went and got his personal training certification. I mean, he's a paramedic. So the anatomy parts and stuff like that weren't too out there for him. Right. Um, and he actually like, he'd or he'd already been kind of like a gym rat back in the day in college and he got himself burnt out and it was like coming back to it and finding the joy in it again. Mm-hmm. And so he's pretty fun in his group fitness classes. He likes to play eighties music. He just shows up as himself. Yeah. Um, and nice, basic, like you're going to work while you're here kind of classes. But I mean, it's, it's different. I don't want to like, sometimes I'm like, just be quiet, Sarah. Like he gets to run his class the way he wants. So sometimes right. that's interesting. Cause I'm like, this is my world now that you're like actively participating in, but, um, it's been fun to unify a little bit more over fitness over the guy who told me all he did was run for tip ups. Right. Right. Well, it's funny you say that too, because at the same time that we're like, Oh, I wish you were more involved. Then then we get more involved. It's like, wait a second, this is my world. <laughs> right. And now you have an opinion. That's not how I do it, but uh, he does a great job and people love his classes. So I'm just like, okay, leave it at that. Yeah. And I like that you guys take each other's classes. You guys definitely seem to be on the same path. And it's, I think that's a big game changer is for a lot of people, they're on different paths, going in two different directions, trying to pull the other one in that direction. And um, you guys seem to fuel the same path. Like maybe there's like little branches here and there. Right. But they're not too astray. So well, Danielle, on that note, like that's something I always think about. Like I've said, thank you to Chris before. Cause I'm like, thank you for growing with me in this, in this direction, because if he hadn't wanted to work on himself, 
like with his mindset and midsection, as I say on our team a lot, like personal growth and your health, yep. um, it would be really hard to have a marriage with someone who wasn't open to that because it's something that I just grow more passionate about each day. It's what I help people do. So it would be very, um, inauthentic, awkward, like it just, it would be difficult. So I'm really grateful that he was just open to this idea right. of, um, this lifestyle. Right. And I mean, luckily he did have the experience early on, you know, you guys do a lot of health challenges in the community. So he was participating with friends and different things. So it wasn't just, you know, doing it with the spouse, there were other people involved, but he did get the experience early on. And I do think that's a great tip to have your spouse as involved as possible early on before yeah. they grow, because they have that opportunity to grow with you. Yeah. They don't want to be on the outside. Feeling no. on the outside is just never a good place in a relationship. And once you're, you're far along, it really is hard to reel them back in, you know, like it, cause you're so far into things that a lot of it is too, um, overwhelming, but, oh man, I just had a thought and it just went off my head. I'll get back there. Um, <laughs> I'll get back there. But, um, you know, for the personal development factor personally, and I don't know where he started. I know for a lot of our people, we start them on the compound effect. I feel like that is one of the best opening personal development. It is very gen generic. It speaks mm -hmm. to everyone. Um, but for our relationship and marriage, personal development was 100% the game changer. Um, it was actually a requirement at one point. I said, if you're not doing this, then like, this isn't going to work because I need someone speaking to your head besides me. Like it can't just be me. And a lot of people downplay it. So for you, I know you do it daily, but what is your typical, um, personal development? Is it podcasts, reading audible? Um, what are your favorites? A little bit of all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I love a good podcast if I'm running or I have a longer drive, but I try to read for at least 10 minutes every single morning. And so our team will do book clubs, which is great because that keeps me super on it. Right. Um, but then like I try to finish a book in between the book clubs. I'm not a super fast reader. I can get easily distracted, but like, gosh, when I make it happen, I love it. And um, so I, I'm a kind of like, PD in a relationship part, I totally count marriage counseling as personal development. Mm -hmm. I am like, oh, I feel like I just read five books when right. I leave a marriage counseling session. And so like, you know, I've talked to Chris too, kind of like you had had a similar conversation with Adam. Like I want, like you're happier. Like you have more ideas. You're more hopeful when this is happening more consistently. And he just hasn't really found a completely consistent routine yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like it gets a little better each time, but I feel like marriage counseling has kind of been that for him. And how often do you guys meet with your counselor? We probably go like every six to eight weeks now. We've oh. been doing it probably for gosh, like two or three, four years. We've been doing it for a long time and we used to go a little bit more frequently, but now it's kind of like, I love that she still likes to see us. Like I kind of thought she'd be like, okay, you died, but she's just like, let's do it eight weeks out. So there's always something to talk about. There's always more growth there. Just learning differently. Like Chris isn't that much of an emotions person. He's the thoughts person, mm -hmm. analytical. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel it. No, I don't want to have small talk. It's so deep. Like everything is like emotions and focused on like what's missing. And he's focused on what could go wrong and thoughts. And so it's like good to learn these things because now I don't take it personal when he's like, anyways, there's a lot of learning about yourself and how that works in our dynamic. Yeah. I think counseling is great, especially when it's not needed because yeah. when you need it, it's hard to get through counseling because there's typically an issue, but if you do it before you need it, when something's happening, it's right away that it's being talked about and, and quote unquote dealt with. But, um, any tips on how you found your counselor? Now you guys are in a smaller area. So I'm assuming there's not like, I don't know, a ton word of mouth, ask your friends. I cannot believe how many inbox messages I get about who our marriage counselor is. I post about it occasionally. Mm -hmm. I'll share about it. I'm, I am an open book. I'm pretty much everything. So I don't have a problem sharing that. But even when I'm not posting about it, people will be like, who's the marriage counselor you see? Right. Um, and so I found out about our counselor through my friend who had went and saw the same therapist 
when she was going through a divorce and she just helped her through so many life changes. So it's funny. I, I tell my friend all the time, I'm like, you, you're like my mini counselor. Cause yeah. she would say things that the counselor had said, like, yeah. well, this is what I learned from so-and-so. And I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. And so, um, yeah, it's someone else's words, like you said. So we signed up with her and like, oh, I'm so grateful. She's fun. And she knows us well now. It's kind of nice to have this third party kind of unbiased appreciates Chris for this, appreciates me for this, and is just right. able to help us. But over time they do get to know you. So then they can be real and honest with you when something's going on or ask those deeper questions like, Hey, you know, this is changing, you know, they're going to know you. And it's just like having another friend, you know, but this is one you pay and that you see every couple of weeks. Um, yes. It's, I think it's important to find one that works well for you. If you don't like a counselor, one, give them a little time because, you know, sometimes at first it does take a little time, but if you don't like them, definitely look into switching because that can be a struggle. Some men don't do well with female counselors. It sounds like Chris is very adaptable and is not, um, does not feel inferior by a woman's conversation, but there are a lot of men who do. So for, I think to take into account that if that's your marriage, look for a male counselor, if you can, um, if that's something they feel more comfortable with to at least get them in the door of counseling and then maybe switch to a female later on. But, um, it's just something to put out there. I know for us, our marriage counselor, we were going when our marriage was really struggling and it was hard because, <laughs> It was like, we were basically having the same conversations we were having at home and there was just a third person. And it's like, if he didn't like what she said, or I didn't like, we were just in a negative energy. So it's very important to find one that will work for you well. Um, but I, I love that. I think counseling, there's also marriage retreats, weekends. I think those are important if you can get away and you have that time, because then you have more time to focus on the relationship and you're not bouncing right back to the kids after an hour of counseling. So that makes a difference too. And, after. and something great that we learned from ours is that the magic five, you have to have five hours of uninterrupted time a week with each other. And I was, she just looked at us and like, what do you got? And I was like, we got like 20 minutes. Like because <laughs> sitting on the couch, watching a show together doesn't count. No. It's like actively noticing the other person talking to them. I was like, so even to this day, my goal is three. I'm like, I'm not even going to stress myself out and try and get to five. Like our kids are both young. They're in everything. Um, three is the goal. Three is better than nothing. Executive or three total. Oh, three. total. Okay. Okay. Total. Yeah. I mean, it'd be great if it can be consecutive, but that's me. Like that's us. Like we drive places all the time and go do fun family adventures and I get a bunch of work done in the car. So right. that'd be me actively choosing to not get work done in the car and talk to Chris Right. The whole time, which is also great, but at some point that work has to happen. So it's just like figuring out when's that going to be, and you're not actually going to be distracted. Like something happens and you take care of it. You are literally just there at ease, at peace, enjoying yourself. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head with the little ones. That time is hard, but I really love that tip because even that three hours a week, if you can get a date night, you know, dinner out or some kind of little time away, it really does make a difference to have that one on one time. So that's an awesome tip. Thank you for sharing that. Um, what other things did I ask? Let me just see here. <laughs> oh, does Chris have, um, so he's kind of, is, does Chris have a passion that you've kind of dove into like that you didn't really like, or maybe still don't enjoy, but you participate in because you're like, he's my husband. I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> so Chris is an outdoorsman. And I grew up in a city called Flint that is like known for making cars. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, not a ton of outdoor spaces. He calls me a city girl, which I think is so funny because I've always liked camping. I went to Girl Scout camp, whatever. But this is like a whole new level. Like when he went camping, he's like, you just go find a spot in the woods and set up your tent. And if a coyote's next to you, it's okay. <laughs> and I was just like, no, we go to state parks and like we have electricity and so he has, he has embraced state park camping for me, thank goodness. But his family has an, a tradition of hunting, but then also trapping, which I was like, what's trapping? I had no idea what it was. 
And my initial reaction was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I eat meat, but I don't like to think about the process. Right, right, right. So it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, well, this is where fur comes from. This is where some of the stuff comes from. But then as I started to really listen to him and his dad, like it's a big tradition with him and his dad and his family, it's what they've always done. Talk about it. Like farmers are calling them to help with that coyote problem oh, um, yeah. that's taking out some of their livestock. Or, you know, property owners are calling them because beavers have built dams and the property's all now flooded. And like, you know, a lot of things that actually need to be taken care of. Yeah. Care of. Like there's been cities that have banned, banned trapping um, and then people's little dogs are getting eaten because now coyotes are in the city. Like it just helps with population control. Right, right. Um, and then I was like, oh, this is how Michigan was founded by fur trappers and fur mm-hmm. traders and like, all of this stuff. So I really had to kind of step back and take um, a different perspective out of it is it's like, you know, like people hunt all the time and stuff like that. That's just kind of a different version of hunting. And then I saw the historical part of it and I saw the tradition and how much him and his dad more than anything, they like being able to help these people that call them. Oh, their whole track line is based on people who call them and want them to come help on their property, but just how much they love being outdoors. They love putting on a pair of waders, going through some swampy land that you would never go through otherwise. Right. So I have a pair of waders. I have carried muskrats and beavers out in a pack on my back. Um, I have seen, I, I know what a conifer is. Like I've learned kind of a lot about trapping. That's I've made them a YouTube channel. Yeah. So I actually think it's really cool. It's so different than anything I was ever exposed to. Yeah. And once I got past this kind of maybe like a PETA reaction right. is what like <laughs> I think of right away. Right. I was like, oh, it's historical and all the parts get used and like we've eaten all sorts of interesting meat. Um, so I've definitely embraced that. I love it. I love when it's trap season. My son goes on the trap line. My daughter has a couple of times. She's a little scared of the critters. So sometimes she doesn't always go, but when we can all go and just be out there on the trap line, it's really fun. Yeah. That honestly is huge to having a healthy relationship is not only asking your partner to be a part of something that you love, but really embracing something that they love as well. And I, like you said it in the beginning, it was experience. Our experience determines our first thoughts on things, but that Mm -hmm. sounds so exciting. And knowing that your son will, you know, eventually be a part of like that with the family and wanting to do that and that you help the community. I mean, Chris, always helps the community. It's amazing to see the things that he does. And you guys are so highly involved in the community. And that's awesome because a lot of people lose that experience, right? In their, um, in bigger communities and whatnot. So I think that's great. And um, I'm going to dive into the survey questions a little bit. So what I absolutely love, because this is how you know that Pessimist Sarah is gone, (laughs) is that... (laughs) When I said, what are your top three objections? She totally saw objectives in that positive spin. And I loved it. I was reading this and I was like, oh my God, she did not read that word correctly. And this is awesome. And I am going to change my survey and add that because I love seeing this. So Sarah, you have some pretty exciting goals for, um, for 2021, a big 10 year anniversary trip. So did you guys get married in 2011? Yep. That is so exciting. 10 years was ours last year. So we did not get to have a trip (laughs) maybe one day. Um, Lots of family camping. You guys share that. It's so fun because it really gets the family together Mm -hmm. and you're off electronics and away from everything. And then sell 2000 planners and be in the, in at least 10 stores. So where are you at with that right now? Like what's your journey to getting into stores with the run your day planner? Oh my gosh, I'm so out of my comfort zone um, with this, but you got to just have a vision. Like, yes. you know, you shoot for the moon and land in the stars or whatever that quote yeah. is. So we have it on Etsy, which does great. So it's just us continuing to advertise, point people there. And now it's me reaching out to stores. Like I have to figure out, especially in a pandemic world, like, so thinking like a store owner, well, they probably go to a trade show and they see like, so- right hitting them up on email, on social media outlets, creating a sell sheet, creating a video. Local stores? We're in a couple of local stores, but I would like to be like in lots of places. We have recently, so I'm up in Alpena, Northern Michigan. We're in a couple stores here. 
we just got into a store in Kalamazoo. We have a store in Grand Rapids. Um, oh my gosh. And then a store on Mackinac Island. Wow. That I'm obsessed with. Awesome. Yeah. And the owner loves our planner, which I was just like, oh my yeah. gosh. I'm slightly obsessed with you because I love all the stuff you do, but I will keep that to myself. But now I've just said it on this podcast. Yeah. Um, so it is just like making the time for it each day. Anything you make the time for grows. And I know this is just like letting myself have enough hope. You got to have the time for it in the actual hope that something will happen. Right. Because if you have the time for it with a negative attitude, nothing happens. So it's just letting that energy happen and that space happen to reach out to places and just get it in front of them and be willing to follow up. I just got an email back from a guy who I have emailed probably five times. And I think I emailed him for the first time five months ago. Right. And he wrote me back and said, it's not the price point that I would like for my store. And I'm like, thanks for telling me that I'm learning. Do you mind telling me what you're looking for? Like I'm flexible. Like I need to know this stuff. So I'm just in a whole new realm now going from a network marketing business that I figured out and I feel like I can have fun in it. I enjoy it. And now this is kind of like your more traditional brick and mortar business. Like I had to go to the County courthouse and get paperwork for stuff. And I was just like, what? Right. It's like it's business 101 now. So That's awesome. It's a fun yeah. challenge. And I just love the planner myself. My friend Betsy and I wanted it ourselves. So yeah. it's been fun seeing other people start to like it and use it. And who knows where it can go? I feel like it has huge potential. Definitely. Now, is there a minimum for the stores? When it gets into the stores, do they have to carry a minimum number or? And not that I've heard yet. <laughs> like our sell sheet is like, do you want 12? Do you want 24? And one lady told me I'll take six. I was like, okay, that's not even on the sheet, but I'm going to do whatever you sure. Here's six. <laughs> Get it out there. And once they sell, then they're like, Hey, they sold. Like, let's do yes. this. That's yes. awesome. So hopefully that starts happening. That is so, so exciting. And then build a retirement that allows for retirement filled with freedom, generosity, and legacy. I feel like you guys are really on such a solid path with that. Living debt-free is a goal for a lot of people. And retirement is something that we don't often think about young. So it's great that you guys, what is your, um, do you guys have any retirement investing or things like that that you mm-hmm. do? Or Oh, we have another meeting with the retirement financial advisor guy. Yeah. This week we, we meet on and off with him and it is not my strong point. Yeah. I just know that I want to be able to be able to do whatever I want. Right. And that's such a driver for me is I don't want to have to say no to things because of money. Right. You don't have the means to do something. And so Chris, who's more analytical, understands some of this stuff more. So I'm really trusting him a lot of times with just kind of like, here's what I want. Can you guys just tell me what to do? So sometimes it's just like what I know I'm not good. I don't want to know the stock market. I don't want to pay attention to that stuff. Right. But I do think that um, we max out accounts at your traditional jobs at my job, my traditional job that I had for a long time. I maxed out that account at Chris's job. He's maxing out that account. If you right. can max them out. Right. And then I think we're going to get into a little bit more investing. I don't know much. Mm-hmm. but maybe something more moderate risk for a little bit because we're still so young that we can ride it out either way. Yeah. I will. Um, I just, my friend just shared it with me. Uh, she's actually going to be here this weekend. So I'm going to ask her more about it, but it is something with investments that it does get you into the stock market a little, but it's more like easy. We don't do stock market either for that same reason. I just don't want to have to pay attention to it or stress about the numbers. Cause I feel like, but we have the same thing, retirement, financial planner, And, you know, you have to think about things that are going to pay for future. So it's so great to do it. If you can do a little now, awesome. But if you can max out when you don't see that money, you don't miss that money. So you can put in the max and it doesn't financially hurt you. If you're in debt, use that money to pay that stuff off. Right. Except for mortgage. That's one that you can hold on to a little bit more, but learning from friends, sharing those things. That's really great. Um, And I, Sarah, I, I love following you. I don't follow a lot of people. Um, I'm always drawn to you. And I think it's because I do know the authenticity of you and your journey. Aww, and I feel like for a lot of people, they don't get to experience that. So things like this, I really enjoy because it shows people that reality and who we are and how our relationships grow over time. And they are work. 
you know that, I mean, over the years, Adam and I have been through a lot and the last few years have been really good. Last year was amazing for us because we both finally got on the same path of planning and that helps, but your open communication is ginormous. Like we talk about communication all the time, but hearing specifically what you do and how you share your business, I feel like is going to make a huge impact for a lot of women who probably are more silent and need to just start sharing. And if they, the ears aren't listening, don't worry, just share, share, share. Eventually something's going to go in there. So, um, is there anything else that you wanted to share or that we didn't touch base on? I think we went over everything that we were. Hmm. About. Oh, but there's probably so much more, but know, right. We'll do another call. If I think of anything, um, yeah. I don't know. I think it's just, it's uh, having this network marketing business has been no one really expects this to be what you do for your living. You know what I mean? But it opened, I was just, I thankfully it was FOMO that got me in the door since I had so much pessimism. And then I just let the transformation take place. And I love the name of your podcast because there doesn't have to be limits. I always tell people like what I do in my role now is I am like here to lovingly challenge your limiting beliefs because the, the only limits are the ones that we actually put on ourselves. And Mm -hmm. like, I could say my marriage doesn't work or I could be like, okay, what could I do here to start working on it? Not that we don't have bad days, but like, I'm really committed to spending the rest of my life with Chris. So I need to act like it. And it is a lot of work. Like you just said with you and Adam, but I, you know, I expect the same from him. I expect him to be willing to come out of his hermit shell as we joke, where he would always say he could live in the woods by himself. Right. I'm like, hey, you gotta stop saying that. That hurts my feelings. Like, I, I get how you mean it, but like, so like growing as well on both ends. Right. I think you just gave the best statement and example. So many people, when our marriage is struggling or I share, so many people say, lower your expectations. And you literally, literally, just shared why you shouldn't lower your expectations because when you vocalize what you need and you share what your expectations are, you give your spouse or partner the opportunity to meet you where you need to be. And lowering your expectations to me defeats you and what you need and desire personally. But it, it doesn't have to mean you have to lower them. It just means your communication needs to be stronger so they know what you need and, and you do that very well. So hold on, I gotta grab something because I wrote something down and I and it kind of goes with, I just happened to write this down and it goes with what um, we were talking about. Um, oh, maybe I put it on social media, but you know, you are your biggest cheerleader, motivator. Like you have to believe in yourself, you know? And those limiting beliefs have such an impact. But if you are constantly dreaming, if you are constantly telling yourself what you can do, you know, your objectives and those things that you want to do, putting them down on paper and seeing them, even as you listed it, I don't think you realized how many stores you were in for run your day. And then when you were saying it, it's like, oh my God, you're so close to your goal. Like that's really exciting. So uh, don't lower your expectations, communicate better with your spouse and they will know what you need and you will know what they need. So thank you, Sarah, so much for being on. I'm so excited. I will let you know when all of this is going to um, go and we'll definitely have you on again because there's so much that I love it. about. Thank you. Stop.